Hello guys, in today's tutorial I'm going to put here a banana because because our game is called Banana Tap and because right now there's nothing there and that's kind of boring. So I'm going to change the the camera background to the to something sky blue. Okay, and now I have this banana that I edited from the web. It looks like this. I'm going to put it in here in front of the camera with the coordinates zero zero okay and actually it fits if it doesn't fit just just move change here the, the camera size so yeah that that works fine and because a steel banana has no is no fun we're gonna, you're going to hit we're going to animate it so let's go into the the animation window just go into windows animation if you don't have it there Anyways, click on the banana and let's create here an animation. So this will be the default animation. Default default banana. Okay. And I'm going to put here the scene view. Okay, and, and now we can animate because this button is pressed, is being is toggled on. We can actually everything that we change here will change there. So this animation will be a simple one. We want the banana to oscillate. So, for example, at zero, it will be with minus three on the Z, on the Z rotation. Then, like at half a second, it will go to three in the oscillation, and at three, at, at and that after one second, it will go back to minus three, and this will let it oscillate. So, okay. So, click back there to stop. Stop animating, okay. And now let's hit play and see what happened. See how it, how it went, okay. That seems cool. This will be the default animation for the banana. And now I want to make an animation of the banana expanding and compressing really quickly to when we tap the screen. So, banana expand, okay. In this banana. Expand. We're going to do exactly the same. Exactly the same thing. Click on here to toggle the animation thing. Then in the scale, this will be a lot quicker. So let's let's zoom in a bit because we want this to have very, to happen really quickly. And it will start. Just change this so that that changes. Okay. Since that that keyframe has appeared, we want it to be one at at, at one in the beginning, so then after some time it will scale like 1.1 and just change its y and x because this is a 2D image and then it will go back to 1 and 1. Okay, let's see how quickly this happens. Okay, this is happening in a weird way because there are some animations to the right. So, okay, this keyframe isn't supposed to be here. Go with it and let's see now. It's a bit too quick, but that's it. So let me put here this. Okay, and now, okay, now it's a bit too slow. Okay, like this will be fine. Okay, so click here to stop animating, and with that done, now in the animator we have these two animations: the ban default banana and the banana expand. And what we want to do is to go from this to this when the taps when the when the screen is tapped and if you don't know much about the animator and the animations and stuff like that just go see some tutorials at Unity, I'll link some below if you, don't, if you need it anyways I want to make a transition from here to here and from here to here like this and now when do I want to go from the default animation to the banana expand animation well when the screen is tapped so I'm going to create here a parameter so going to parameters, click on this plus sign, and we want to add a bool which is tapped when the screen is tapped. Okay, so click on the transition. Okay, and here we want to add a condition when the tap when the screen is tapped. This is true. Okay, that's done. And then it will, when when this animation exits, it will go back to the to the default to the default banana animation. Okay, so now we have to script to make a script 
to tell us that tapped will be true. So remember that in the last tutorial we had this script on this other game object. Well, now we can delete it and we're going to put the script, that very same script, in the banana. Okay, now it's in the banana. And let's open that script. Okay, so here what we're, what we're going to do is to access the animator component, which is this one. If there's, I'll also link a tutorial about accessing other components in the description. Anyways, we want to access it every time a touch is detected. So if a touch is being detected, what we're going to do is access this game object's comp uh, animator. So this dot get component, and this is just how get component works. Get component animator like that, and we want to set the bool. This is a function from it. Set the bool, and we name that bool tapped. So we want tapped to be equal to true. And of course, now we also need a, a way that to tapped be equal to false again. So I'm going to create here a function that is never called through the code. So public void tapped false. And this function will be called in the actually through the animation. I'm going to show you how to do that in a second. So okay, whenever this function is called, tap is equals false again. And this step, if you don't remember, is this step over here. Okay, with that then now I'm going to change the animation. This animation, the expand animation, I'm going to add the event. So so click here, click two times over here, and now we can select a function from one of the scripts that is in the in the banana game object. So we only have the touch stuff, the touch stuff, and the only non-default script is this one, the tapped false. So just go on to here and that, that script will be there. Okay, and now every time this animation plays, tapped will be returned to false again. Now okay, so with that done, it should all be working fine. So let's see. Okay, so if I tap, oh wait, I forgot, here in the script, it can't be zero. It has, it has always to be one or greater. So for it to work, okay. So it is one. If I tap, okay. As you can see, it is working, but it's kind of funky. So we're going to make it better. Okay. So to make it better, there's some stuff that you have to do. First, is the, is these transitions. As you can see, they go like smoothly, go from one animation to another. And you don't want that. You want it to go like BAM. And that way it will go like BAM. In this, when it goes from this to this animation, you also want it to go like BAM. So I think doing this will solve it. Okay. Like so. So like that. And finally, on the transition from default to the banana expand. We want to make as exit time false so that to go from this one to this one we don't have to wait for this animation to actually end playing so let's see if I hit play as you can see it's instantaneous if I click if I tap it goes and it works fine and with this then the last thing that I'm going to do today is to actually display the the count score in here because it was previously displayed on the console now I'm going to display it over here but just by going into game object UI text today I'm not going to talk too much about this text and how can it be edited and pivoted and placed correctly in every screen I'm just going to put it here and do that but I'll talk about talk more about uh, this UI stuff in another tutorial Anyways, put here public text. As you can see, it doesn't find it because you have to put here using. This is something just that I discovered. It has to be like this. I don't really know why. So uh, using UI public. Now it appears public text, and you want to name this score. Okay. Now we have a, 
a score text. And if I go into Unity, if I click on the script on the banana, there's an empty field for that public variable. And all I have to do is to drag the text that we just created into there. And this will associate this component from this text game object to our script. And now we can actually change it. So here we can actually in the up after the so here after the loop we can here we can make score dot text and by this we're, we're accessing this text parameter of this text script score dot text equals i which is the the count of tabs and we want to convert to a string like this. Okay, so now this game, this text should display a number, the number of taps. Okay, if I tap, it goes to one and so on and so forth. As you can see, it's working pretty fine. And for today's tutorial, that's it. Thank you for watching and see you in the next tutorial.